Gracious God, on this Pentecost Sunday, we recognize and celebrate the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, fully God, present with the Father and the Son, come to dwell within us and empower us, and we thank you for this power given to us. Amen. I invite you to please stand and join me in the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please take a moment of silent reflection. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take this time to share the peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I have one note in the Kyrie. There is a missing line. So just kind of listen and follow along to where you need to come in. So.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son, and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson is from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tang language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. 
In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Our second lesson is from the fourth chapter of 1 Peter. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. 
to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise this time I invite the children forward for a children's message. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Today is Pentecost Sunday. And what that is, is we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming into our lives and into us. And when the Holy Spirit came to be in us, we um, know from the story of the disciples that they were given powers to do things they never could do before, like teach and preach about Jesus in languages they didn't even know. And in us, it helps us to have the courage to talk about God with other people. And I brought a flashlight today kind of to show how the Holy Spirit works in us. So I have this flashlight. It's pretty bright, even though it's, it's little. I don't want to shine it in your lights, your faces. But um, I have this flashlight because I have it all over my house. Yep, I... I got a bunch of them at home, too. In case electricity goes out, I can find my way around the house, right? Or at least to my cell phone so I can turn that on. My mommy has a blue one. A blue one? Yeah. I have red and silver and blue and all kinds of colors. So this flashlight, in order for it to run, it needs a battery. If it doesn't have a battery, and I think I can get the battery out, then it won't turn on. But because it has some batteries in it, then it makes light. And the spirit works that way in us. Because we have the spirit in us, we have power, like this flashlight has power to make a light, to let our light shine in the world. That's what Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount. He said, let your light so shine in the world that people may recognize your good deeds and celebrate God. And that's what the spirit helps us do inside us and gives us the courage and helps us to do good things so people celebrate God and helps us to point to God when we do them. All right, let's pray. And you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your spirit. 
helping us to let our light shine. Amen. Thanks for coming up. So, you know, I grew up in Minnesota, and I grew up on a farm. Uh, my brother-in-law was a farmer, and one day I went over to his parents' home, and it didn't seem like there was anyone on the yard, or at least around the house. So I got out of my car, and I walked down to the machine shed to see if anyone was there. Now, my brother-in-law's parents had a watch goose. <laughs> and as I was walking towards the machine shed, the goose caught whiff of me and came around the corner with wings flapping, beak snapping, honking as loud as she could. And she rightfully scared me to death. First I froze, then I realized the goose meant business, and I ran for the nearest escape, which happened to be the ladder on the side of the green drawing bin. And so I climbed up the ladder and waited until somebody could come and call the goose off. And I thought of that story when I was reading about early Celtic Christians. And those are the early Christians around 400 of Britain and Ireland. And they had an image of the, go of the Holy Spirit that was a bird, but not the bird we usually relate or imagine uh, in, our, in our artwork. You can see the, the dove up there, and there's a dove over there, and I think there's some doves over there. And so we like to use the idea of a dove in our artwork to symbolize the Holy Spirit. We get that from Jesus' baptism. No, they didn't see the Holy Spirit as a dove. They imagined the Holy Spirit as a wild goose. I call it the Holy Goose. And I truly believe the goose is a more accurate image of the Spirit and the way the Spirit works. So you can't control a wild goose. You can't bend a goose to its, your will. They are loud. They are raucous. They do not have a peaceful coo, but rather a jarring honk. Their honk is challenging. It is strident. And it is a bit frightening when it comes out of nowhere. And in the same way, the Spirit of God can be in our lives and in our experience. When the Spirit comes into your life, it can be unsettling and disturbing and knock you out of control. Consider the story of Pentecost that we read in Acts 2. What was the impression that the people had of the disciples? What did they think? Anybody? <laughs> that they were drunk. Yeah, they thought they were drunk and disorderly. That is not a cooing dove experience. That is a honking bird experience. Wild freedom, intoxicating joy. These are aspects of the Spirit entering in, confounding our expectations, slipping us out of restrictive ideas, and opening new doors for God's people. So think about this. If the Spirit is so noticeable, 
Why is it that mainline Christians pretty much only talk about the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday? Jurgen Moltmann, who is a theologian, he coined the thought that the Holy Spirit was the shy member of the Trinity. And when he said that, he didn't mean that the Holy Spirit was shy. The Spirit is far from shy. But as we who are shy to speak of the Spirit, it's like the great paradox of the Spirit. It's the most noticeable, most powerfully impressive presence of God with us, and we are the shyest to acknowledge it. He has an explanation as to why, and I think it kind of makes sense. We can see creation. We can live and experience in creation. It's tangible. And so it's easy for us to connect with, to identify with a creator God. And we are the church, the body of Christ, right? And Jesus was incarnate. He was a human being. And so it's easy for us to connect with the idea of Jesus and of being the church and of being the body. But the Spirit, the Spirit is a force that cannot be contained. It's like the wind. It's power and energy, the third person of the Trinity, one true God with the Father and the Son. Spirit is mystery and mysterious, constantly moving and active. It's harder to reach out and touch the Spirit and contain it and claim it. And hence the paradox of the Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is the part of God that lives in us. Next week we're going to have a couple baptisms. And you'll hear in the baptism story about how the Spirit comes to be present in us. Because that's what we believe. Through your baptism, the Spirit comes to dwell within you, right? So that's the living God dwelling in us. That's pretty amazing. That's a big wow. God chooses to dwell with in us. And that Spirit gives us the power to have the courage to point to God, to do good works that we may celebrate God's work in us. To illustrate the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit works in our lives, I gave you some balloons. So those of you that have balloons, I want you to take them out right now, and I just want you to look at them. So this balloon is kind of wimpy. doesn't have much life. No energy, blah. This balloon is uninspired. Inspiration means to be inspirited, right? So this balloon, it just doesn't have any spirit in it. And sometimes we can feel like this balloon. It can be times when we feel depressed or when we feel down when we're struggling with loss or grief or broken relationships, especially when we feel our relationship with God is broken and we aren't inspired, inspirited, but we are. That's the promise we are given. We're given the promise in the Bible. It says the Spirit comforts us, shows compassion and care, gives us the words for prayer or praise in our place, in our stead. When we do not have the words, when we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit will pray for us. The Spirit gives us peace and always leads us to hope. Now, sometimes we talk about the Spirit being the breath of God. 
So I want you to think of this balloon as you. And I want you to blow up the balloon, thinking of the breath as the breath of God, the spirit inspiriting you. Don't tie your balloon, just hang on to it. So go ahead and blow them up. As you blow up your balloon, what do you notice about the balloon? What do you notice about the balloon? It's bigger, right? Expanded. It got its edges pushed. It changed. The Spirit helps us grow our faith. The Spirit changes us. Okay, now I want you to hold up this balloon, and when I count to three, I want you to let go of the balloon. One, two, three. Let go. <laughs> so let's learn something from these balloons. That was fun. <laughs> so... These Holy Spirit is like these balloons, right? When you let go of the balloon, did it stay in one place? No, it did not. And when you let go of the balloon, did you know where it was going to end up? No. You, some of you probably could find it right now. Um, and even know which one was yours. But I think most of us probably wouldn't be able to exactly name which one is ours. The Holy Spirit is like that. Unpredictable. We don't know what the Spirit is going to do and where the Spirit is going to lead us when we let go and let God in our lives. The Spirit surprises us in exciting and wonderful ways. And proof of that is another way in which these balloons are like the spirit. What did you hear when you let go of the balloons? Yes? What else did you hear? Laughter. Laughter. Right. The Holy Spirit brings joy. So, yeah, it's not in our control. And we don't know where the Spirit's going to lead us when we let go of the Spirit and we let it work in our lives. But it brings laughter. It brings joy. It brings hope. Always. That is the promise of the Spirit, to bring hope and excitement. And it's something to think about, especially... In this time of transition, because that can be really scary, and it can make us want to hold on even tighter and try to predict even more the way things should go, the, the way we should be in the future. And I invite you to pray for the Spirit to guide us. Pray for the Spirit to let go and see what fun, what excitement, what new discoveries, what unexpected surprises we might be led to. It's noisy, the spirit, joyful, out of control, and sticks to you like glue. Like I said earlier, in our baptism, we receive the spirit inside. So when people ask, where is God? You go right here. God is in me. I got that promise. The Spirit dwells within me, empowering me, strengthening me, giving me hope when I feel hopeless, growing my faith like that balloon expanded with the breath of God. So when you feel limp and low and think you know where you should go and what you should do. Pray for the breath of God to fill you, to inspire you, and let go and see 
and see where you are led. Probably to places you never thought possible. So the Holy Spirit is not the shy member of the Trinity in any way. The Holy Spirit is rather a honking wild goose jarring us out of our complacency and a great helper and God dwelling within us. And that is one holy goose of a revelation. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us as for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate as by the Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us. May we see your presence in the stillness and in the busyness and the noise. May we see you in the joys and celebrations of our lives, as well as the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who grieve. Bring peace to those in mental and emotional unrest. Stir within us the trust in life beyond death. Fill us with hope and renew our minds with your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire people of every land and language, every nation to seek peace. End violence, warfare, and ethnic strife. Lead us from fear to friendship, from injustice to equality, from oppression to freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak. Heal the wounded and broken. Give rest to the weary. Comfort those who are neglected or abused those who are unemployed and those who struggle with addiction, for those who are ill. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, bless those who work with children, those discerning a call to ministry, and all the baptized. Bless visitors, new members, and those who are absent from us today. Transform our hearts and our minds. Fill us with love that overflows and remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all our hearts and our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died. Inspire us by their witness and bring us to the fullness of your promise of resurrection and eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers. In the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
list of who to pray for. known to us. indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out this fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor now and forever. 
Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared and all are welcome. The ushers will let you know when you can come forward. We will kneel or stand at the railings and you will receive the bread and a cup of wine or grape juice. Just let the servers know which you would like. If you are unable to come forward, let the ushers know and we will bring it to you. Amen.
I invite you to please stand and if you would like, hold the hand of the person next to you as you receive the communion blessing as a community. Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life at giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I invite some announcements. I believe there are a couple people. There's one or two.
But I was just thinking how we also rejoice with you. We, we rejoice, Brian, in your promotion. We rejoice, Angie, with you. You've already found a place to share your teaching gifts. And of course, with uh, these two precious children. Um, as far as thanking you for what you've done for us, it's far too much. But Angie, we will miss your beautiful voice. Brian, thank you for all your work with finances. And to these two beautiful children, we watch them grow in stature. Um, Chris and Brian, you probably heard the adults. So thank you for everything that you've done. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. When you came to this congregation, we rejoiced to receive you into our fellowship in the gospel. In this community of faith, you have heard the proclamation of God's word, which reveals his loving purpose for you and for all of creation. You've been nourished at this holy table and called to be witnesses of the gospel. God has blessed you in this fellowship and he has blessed us through you. We encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gifts in your new congregation as we know you will, as very faithful workers with us in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Brian, Angie, Ellie, and Emerson, and for our life together in this congregation, this community. As they have been a blessing to us, so now we send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Please stand and receive the blessing. Now may God, our Creator, our Savior, and the Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to
Go in peace. Remember the poor.